As some of y'all might know, grinding is more of an end process the material before it goes out to the world. So this series is designed to help you introduce grinding into your machine shop or get started in a grinding career path. We're gonna cover the three most basic types of OD grinding. Plunge grinding, angle plunge, and multi-plunge grinding. So these three grinds make up the meat of what OD grinding is. We're gonna talk about each one and we're gonna cover some tips that I've learned along the way that'll help you out and help you get started. So what I have here is a piece of 4142 that's eight inches long, two and three quarters inch diameter. So why I chose this material is that it's cheap, it's accessible, and it'll help you give you an understanding of how the machine operates. This way you can go out and grind all different types of materials using the same principles. You just might have to make a few changes. So the first grind we're gonna talk about is a plunge grind. So a plunge grind is the simplest forms of the three grinds we're gonna talk about today. A plunge grind involves moving your wheel in position in Z and then plunging straight down in X to your desired size. Studer gives you two different ways to set your zero position. You can either use a flagging method or you can do a minimum cleanup on your X and Z surfaces and claim that as zero. I prefer the flag method versus the minimum cleanup method because if you use a minimum cleanup method, you're removing material that could help you adjust your taper and get your finish right. But using the flagging method allows you to flag your part, use your offsets to back it off and walk it in. Let's go ahead and get started with our plunge grind. So I've already programmed the part, backed off the offset and proved out the program. Let's go ahead and take our initial grind so we can see where the machine's at and then make our final correction. She's about to start grinding that right, right now. Perfect. There's three grinding cycles that I programmed it to dress after the roughing cycle. It's gonna remove all that material until there's three thousands left. Then it's gonna come, go and dress, then it's gonna come back and start grinding from three thousands away. So as you can see right here, it just came back from the dress. We're at our finished grind now. We're three tenths away, three tenths away. 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, one, spark out. So that's where you see that drop off coming on. It's got a six second spark out. Boom, there it is, retract, go over. All right, so our part just finished. We took it down to final size. We're gonna check it with our two to three quantum Minitoyo OD mic. Five nine, so. 590 and 50 millionths. The OD is on size and the finish looks amazing. So the next grind we're gonna talk about today is the angle plunge. An angle plunge is similar to a plunge grind, but this one we're gonna be grinding in X and Z. We're gonna be grinding X and Z at an angle specified at what we tell the machine. The two most common angles that I've used in industry are 30 degrees and 45 degrees. This is my go-to grind 99% of the time because I can manipulate the wheel into doing what I want, whether that's grinding a shoulder or an OD or both at the same time. The setup is exactly the same. We're gonna flag the end of the part, we're gonna flag the OD. Then we're gonna measure the OD, put in that number and keep this as our Z zero. What's different about this operation compared to the first one is that this side is ground. We're gonna have to attach our drive dog to this side. Now we don't wanna mar up this surface so what we have is we have a metal hose clamp that has a plastic fitting inside of it. So this is how I do it. I put that plastic fitting inside that hose clamp and I attach it with a piece of electrical tape. So this way I can attach it to my ground surface without marring it up. Wheel on. Now as you can see in X and Z here, X is moving and Z is moving. It's vector grinding down. Since we're cutting with tool reference position one, we're cutting with the left side. So it's gonna vector grind down. If we were to vector grind with tool reference position number 11, it would vector grind to the right side. So as you can see with our centers, those coolant lines are putting oil right on those centers and that's keeping those centers lubricated and cool. What you wanna listen for is excessive ringing, you know, you want to be checking your part, make sure it's not burning, chatter, 
all that. That's why I stand pretty close to the machine. I can hear the ring, which is funny because that's actually what the Sensotron does. It's, pi it's picking up the ringing from the grinding of the part in the wheel. So once I hear the ringing kind of go to excessive, then I need to either slow it down or kick it out or something like that. But as of right now, it's grinding pretty good. So as you can see, we've been roughing out material. Now it's at its finish cycle, it's kind of plateauing. So that's what we want. We want a nice even stroke of that Sensotron that when it goes to spark out, that spark out is gonna dwell on that part, causing the deflection to kind of settle. So what we should see in our spark out every time is the spark out's gonna cut on, it's gonna count down from however many seconds you tell it, then it's gonna drop off. So we need to pay attention to it at here when it gets down closer. So now we're at a tenth away, and once it goes down to zero, the spark out's gonna kick on, which I gave it a six second spark out. So here you go, there it is. So as you can see the spark out, it's starting to dwell down. Boom. Let's go ahead and check our part. Uh, 901, 50 minutes, 5901, 50 minutes. All right, guys, just checked it. It's 2.5901, right on size. So we're gonna leave it right there. The third grinding technique we're gonna talk about in this series is called the multi-plunge. The multi-plunge grinding cycle is used when the width of your part is bigger than the width of your wheel. What happens is the wheel's gonna come down, it's gonna grind the furthest position on one side, grind the furthest position on the other side and calculate how much it needs to remove down the middle. Once it plunges down to the value you tell it to do in the program, it's gonna do a traverse grinding cycle to help blend everything and put that part on size. So with that, let's get grinding. <laughs> It's gonna start our first plunge on the far left side of that part. It's feeding, feeding down. Okay, we reached our stock allowance. So we just finished. Now it's gonna to go to the far right side and do the same thing, plunge down to our dedicated B value. It did the far left, it did the far right. Now it's gonna compensate for the middle. It's just finished dressing, so now it's gonna start its traverse cycle. Okay, our cycle just ended. Let's open our door and check it out. So we just did a test grind on it, proved out our program. The finish looks amazing, so we kind of know what parameters we have. Now, the last thing we have to check before we put it on size is our taper. As you can see here, I took a minimum cleanup, but I'm not all the way cleaned up right here in the middle. But I am cleaned up on the left side and the right side, so that means I can check left and right and if those are the same, I can go ahead and grind down because I know that the wheel is gonna be the same on each side. So we'll go ahead and check our taper, make an adjustment if we need to. It's 11 and eight. Okay. So we got about a thou. So it's bigger on this side, smaller on this side. So what we're gonna do is pull that part away from the wheel. There's two different ways to approach adjusting your taper. The first way you can do it manually. The second way you can use Studer technology to help assist you. So first thing we're gonna do from our home screen is we're gonna go to corrections. And then from here, we're gonna find cylindricity correction. Now the first thing you need to choose is your type of correction. The two choices are tail stock or work head. Since we're between centers, we're gonna be adjusting our taper from our tail stock. So we're gonna select tail stock. So the next variable is the clamping length. That is the distance between centers. So that's gonna be designated by L1. 
we know we got an eight inch bar, so we're gonna type in eight inches. The next one is gonna be our measuring length. Our measuring length is gonna be the length of our OD that we're grinding that has our taper in it. So we know we have an eight inch bar, we took an inch and a half off each side, so we have a five inch OD in the center of our part. So L2 is gonna be five inches. So diameter one is gonna be labeled as D1. As you can see, it's on the far right side, closest to our tail stop. So we know after measuring that our part is pushed into the wheel, so we need to pull that part out. Since it's pushed into the wheel, it's gonna be the smaller number, which is 2.61185. Now diameter two, which is labeled D2, is the far left side, which is closest to our head stop. Now we know that that is our bigger diameter, so this is gonna be 2.61185. So we've got about eight cents taper in our part. From here, this is where Studio is gonna help us out. We're gonna go down here to calculate correction. It gave us a correction value of minus 1,002 tenths and 80 millionths. So a good way to remember which way to go when you're using your adjustment knob, if you wanna pull the wheel away from the part, you wanna pull your adjustment knob towards you. So since it's a negative number, we're gonna to go towards us. So now that we have our correction value, let's go ahead and make our adjustment and we're gonna red up our part using a red marker and then we're gonna take another test grind. As you can see right here, we marked the whole thing up. The only the left side is getting ground right now. Now when it traverses back across the other side, it's gonna clean everything up. Now we know we've got a beautiful cleanup all across that part. If you don't have a good visual of your part and you try, and you make an adjustment and it don't grind anything away or it grinds a little bit on this side and maybe a little bit on the other side, you could be chasing your tail all day long. Right side. 10, 8. Ten, eight. Okay, so we just adjusted our taper. Our finish is good. So our finish taper is done. Let's go ahead and put it on size. Call this part done. All right, so our part's done, let's take it out. It's been fun showing you some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. In this three-part series, we cover the three most basic types of OD grinding. If you wanna learn more and see how each program is broken down step-by-step, step, you should check out our Grinding Academy. So if you like what we're doing and what we're showing you, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and help support free education and bring the manufacturing industry up in the world one grind at a time. So in following series, we're gonna be grinding some crazy material, ink and nails, stainless, and titanium, and we're also gonna be utilizing amazing wheels. So stick around for more grinding content. I'm Chris from Titans of CNC. Thanks for watching.